This is a demonstration shown by EMC at VMworld 2011 about the changes in vSphere 5 that relate to scale-out NAS models using Isilon and uh, vSphere 5 as an example. So, let's start off by taking a look at uh, the Isilon cluster and the vSphere cluster configuration that we have. The first thing that's worth pointing out is that Isilon's management uh, uh, URL is actually load balance across the entire cluster. So if we open up the uh, Isilon UI at that, uh, at that management uh, URL, um, we're going to connect to uh, one of the nodes, but in the end it doesn't matter which node. And you can see here that we've got an Isilon cluster that's currently up and running with three nodes um, in total that uh, has a total amount of storage, which is 18 terabytes in the cluster that's split between um, uh, solid state and, and uh, um, traditional storage models. Um, if we take a look at how this cluster is configured, um, you'll notice that uh, you've got a smart connect zone, which is used for uh, the management um, uh, you know, pool, in effect, and another smart connect zone, which is actually used for NFS exports. Um, that uh, is an, a range of uh, IP addresses that are going to be used for um, nodes as they come online um, and for hosts to attach to. Now, previously in vSphere, um, by the way, you can see here that we're running vSphere 5, and there's four nodes in the cluster, and you'll see the exact vSphere build that we're using. Um, previously, uh, all of the nodes within a cluster would, in general, go to one IP address um, for an NFS data store. There's no real round robin or distribution, and best practice typically was to name it to go to a specific IP address. And since it's using NFS v3 and still is in vSphere 5, it would always terminate uh, at a single point because there was a single TCP connection. What we're going to do here is we're going to point uh, the NFS data store at a single DNS server name, which is that Smart Connect uh, pool name that you saw earlier. Um, it'll be one of the five NFS exports that we've configured on that particular cluster. And uh, we'll give it a name and let's see what happens. So uh, we're now mounting that NFS data store, um, relatively simple and easy. Um, historically one of the advantages of, uh, of NFS. Um, and you can see here that it's mounted up and it's got uh, that roughly you know, 18 terabytes of capacity shown. If we go back to the Isilon management cluster, you can see that those client connections from that particular ESX host uh, is uh, connecting to node 3 for that particular NFS export. Now, again, one thing that's very unique about Isilon is it's a real fundamental and true scale-out NAS storage meaning that file system is uh, available across all of the nodes. But remember, um, it uses vSphere 5 and vSphere 4 and vSphere 3 use NFS v3, which means that a single host for a single mount will use a single connection only. But if we take a look as we mount another file system on that same cluster, will it go to the same node or will it go somewhere different? Remember, we noted that it's going to the NFS server by the DNS name. If you take a look here, you can see that the second node um, is actually connecting in to a separate Isilon cluster. So as we add more file systems that are mounted on that individual ESX host, um, it's distributing the load of client connections across the Isilon cluster. Um, so uh, let's go in and uh, mount up another example. Uh, once again, notice we're using the um, uh, DNS name. Um, and uh, then we specify the data store name. We're mounting now our third and separate NFS data store. And as you'd expect, this uh, fact that we're using DNS round robin is nicely going to distribute this across to the third Isilon node. So we have a nice balanced configuration here across a single vSphere cluster. So one, two, and three, all nodes nicely balanced. Again, this is worth noting that this really only works well if the uh, NFS server is able to spread out that individual file system so that it's accessible via all of these nodes. Now, continue this example to the next level. Uh, we've created a little prototype of a VSI plugin for Isilon. This will eventually GA, which will help the next steps because we're going to automate all the Isilon provisioning directly from within vSphere. So uh, we're going to take this uh, Isilon cluster um, that we've selected. We're going to say, uh, I want to take uh, existing um, uh, uh, data store and distribute it across um, all, of the, all of the individual um, ESX hosts in that cluster. And let's use all of the NFS exports that are part of um, the Isilon cluster. 
So you can see here that uh, you know very rapidly the number of nodes, the number of clients, and the number of uh, mounts is increasing. But you'll also notice that the distribution of those uh, connections is remaining extremely even and balanced across each one of the Isilon nodes in the cluster. Again, this is de demonstrating that in vSphere 5, uh, scale out NAS models, um, because it uses this round robin, you can use this round robin approach. If the NFS export can be presented across all of the nodes in a cluster, um, everything can very easily and naturally be balanced uh, across all of the nodes in the cluster. The next test is to see what happens as we add more Isilon nodes to the cluster. So let's see how that works. Now we've got seven Isilon nodes available here to add to our existing three node cluster to make a 10 node Isilon configuration. Um, again, one of the incredible powerful things about um, Isilon is that as you add the nodes, the file system continues to just get distributed across all of those nodes. Remember, we're starting with three nodes with 18 terabytes uh, available in the current configuration. So we're going to go in and we're going to add each one of these Isilon nodes to the cluster. Again, adding a, a node, an Isilon node to an existing Isilon cluster is unbelievably simple. It's as simple as adding the nodes um, and, uh, and then indicating that they're part of that pool for those uh, NFS exports. So as these nodes come online, let's see what occurs. Will the workload continue to be spread out across all of the nodes? Um, we'll see as they are added. Now remember, Isilon's uh, technology here is very unique. The ability to spread the file system, the metadata, the content uh, across every node in a way that's transparent um, is one of the core architectural benefits of how Isilon functions. So here you can see that these nodes are all coming online and the cluster is now easily scaled up to 10 nodes inside our cluster. Now we've got a total of 61 terabytes of available storage to use. And furthermore, going into vSphere, you can see that the data stores note that there's a total of uh, 61 terabytes available to use in these pools for these data stores. Um, and boom, that's true across every single node of the cluster. We didn't even need to do anything. So simple and easy expandability of the backend storage is one of the benefits of scale out models. Um, scale out NAS here. Uh, notice that the NFS connections are still going across those three nodes. Now, why is that? It's because we haven't indicated at the Isilon layer that we want um, those NFS um, uh, uh, exports to be automatically rebalanced and which members are part of those pools. Uh, because, for example, you might want some uh, members to not uh, express and export certain NFS data stores, but being able to say that the NFS data store is available on all the nodes is as simple as what we just did. We just added them to the pool. Um, and if we go and we take a look at the cluster, look at that. The NFS data stores on, on vSphere are now non-disruptively distributed across the entire Isilon cluster. Let's see if this is not just a question of connection, but actual bandwidth utilization. So we've created a little uh, Power CLI um, um, script um, to create uh, 10 clones of VMs uh, on those data stores. And let's see what happens. So the cloning has started. Um, if you take a look, you can see actually in vSphere that uh, the VMs are now uh, starting to appear in vCenter. And uh, you can see the progress task. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on from a load standpoint. You can see that we're now running four uh, gigabits per second of concurrent load against all of those um, datas, uh, all of those VMs as they're being cloned. Um, and if you take a look as those operations uh, go on their merry way, um, if we take a look, the actual load is being evenly distributed across the entire Isilon cluster. And uh, off they go. Very rapidly, the cloning operation continues. So the point of this demonstration is to show that not only are we distributing the client connections, but those distributed client connections means that um, everything is nicely distributed both across the ESX host and as well across the underlying um, storage infrastructure. Now we're powering on each one of the VMs and we've actually configured it such that the VMs actually generate a load 
um, against the storage subsystem as they're powered on. So what we've now got is we've got a large number of VMs. They're all distributed across data stores. They're all generating an I.O. Um, let's see what that workload looks like. So now uh, you can see it's extremely well balanced. We're, we're driving um, you know, the same amount of bandwidth um, across the entire configuration and across this 10 node cluster we're driving 12 gigabits per second. Again, this highlights the simplicity and benefit of scale out NAS models in the VMware use case. The other benefit is that the failure behavior is very different than traditional clustered NAS implementations. So if we fail a node, um, normally with traditional clustered NAS models, um, what occurs is that there's some sort of failover behavior. So we're going to force a shutdown on one of the nodes while the workload is still running. So there's VMs supporting that data store. Now notice, remember that in this model, what is different is, you now notice that node is offline, um, What's different is that the file system is being distributed and presented by all the nodes. So um, the file system continues to be accessed transparently via the remaining active nodes in a way that is completely transparent. The, the throughput is, is roughly consistent. Um, you know, we've lost the throughput of a single node, but it's been completely a non-event um, at the VMware layer. Again, showing not only simplicity of scale and distribution, um, performance, uh, being nicely balanced, but also failure behavior, which is very, very nice. So there you have it. Uh, benefits around scale-out NAS in vSphere 5 using DNS round robin. Um, benefits that are intrinsic in true scale-out models where the file system and its access is balanced across all of the nodes in a cluster. Um, and uh, that's the power of EMC Isilon and vSphere 5 together. One thing that's worth noting is that today, uh, uh, Isilon's best use cases are around tier 3 and tier 4 and some tier 2 use cases based on IO latency. But just imagine this capability as the transactional behavior of Isilon uh, starts to expand to all sorts of workloads. Thanks very much and I hope you enjoyed this demo.